Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you had a good lunch. I'll bring some action packedness and intensity, I hope. Um, yeah, my name's Alistair McPherson. I am here today playing as Chief Executive for Plymouth Energy Community. I also play as uh, leading a team around climate change, um, energy, and fuel poverty projects in the council. Um, just a quick brand awareness question. <coughs> Who's uh, hands up if you've heard of Plymouth Energy Community already? <coughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Um, I've only got 10 minutes. I'm going to do a, a whistle stop tour of. Um, our learning journey and our excitement around this particular project is a th kind of three uh, take home messages, I guess, in terms of um, what I'd like you to, to, to hear from the babble I might give you. One, it's about locally owned um, renewable energy and the ability to deliver a new way of delivering renewable energy in a kind of more distributive, um, uh, more kind of bottom up grassroots approach. Two around, um, well, we talked to this morning about uh, market failures, about ethical investment and about crowdsourcing an ethical investment solution. And three, you know, you guys are all about learning, or a big chunk of the audience is about learning. It's about a, a local um, actual learning opportunity that covers social, environmental, economic, marketing, a whole range of different angles. Um, and so there may be some useful spin off conversations that come from this. So, without further ado, Plymouth Energy Community um, established only last year. Um, we're only just a year old. Um, we're here to um, do three things. One, to help the local community uh, buy its energy in a different way. It's about helping people use energy, hopefully less of it, um, and um, to generate more local renewable energy. Um, why are we doing it? I think you guys get that. Um, but there's a big part of it at the bottom of it. It was about like trying to take activities, economic activities from um, that local energy space and trying to take some profits and surpluses from those activities and put, put it back into um, reinvesting it locally in those agendas. So before I talk about the local renewable energy bit, I just wanted to give you a bit of um, context about what we're doing on the uh, buying energy and helping people with how they buy their energy. We um, run a service which is about like, giving people advice on their bills um, and giving them options about how they could re reduce those just by switching, um, kind of often switching tariff or switching um, provider. We also do some work around fuel debt and helping people with how they build for their energies and the debts that sometimes are like, uh, accumulate around that. There's a big problem with fuel debt, growing problem with fuel debt, and we have two dedicated fuel debt advisors that work um, with people in that situation to get those debts written off through a grant fund that we have access to. <clears throat> we also do a whole load of work in our energy efficiency space. Um, and the primary area of activity on that in the last like, nine months has been a partnership with British Gas promoting their energy company obligation offer. Um, and that's aiming to you know, significantly improve the thermal efficiency of the houses, particularly the most, uh, and le sorry, the least thermally efficient properties across the city. So we're targeting that activity around that. We've done a whole load of work there and that's just grown just recently with um, a, an award from government of uh, three million pounds worth of grants that will be marketed to householders across the city in, uh, in the coming months. What I really want to speak to in this kind of what is now seven minute slot um, was around local renewable energy, that clean, green, secure thing. Um, what we've set out to do is to generate more of that locally, um, and particularly by providing free panels to, to local schools and community buildings um, across the city. Um, we obviously want to reduce carbon by doing that, but we want to take some of those profits um, from that activity and reinvest it back in those first two areas of activity, which will never make us any money, like giving people energy efficiency advice and like getting them to switch bills. No one's going to get um, a new hummer out of that. So this is a kind of a, yeah, an opportunity to, do, uh, to, to drive some revenue back into um, this co-op that we've created. Um, and it generates a new opportunity for local ownership. Something's quite exciting about like, giving people the opportunity to own panels and to, to take a stake in energy generation at a local level. So that's the kind of little learning that we've been on um, in the last like, four or five months, more specifically. Um, this diagram just shows um, some of the relationships that happened um, in um, setting this um, proposal up. Uh, 
basically in February of uh, the, in February the 28th, we launched a um, uh, an investment opportunity, a community share investment opportunity. Um, which was to raise funds for putting solar panels on schools and community buildings across the city. Um, to do that, we uh, launched a, an investment vehicle. It was another cooperative called PEC Renewables, um, which was there purely as an investment vehicle for this particular um, opportunity. PEC Renewables um, is going to um, put those panels on schools and community buildings across the city. It you know, basically leases that roof space and provides them panels for free. The school gets reduced electricity <coughs> bills, reduced carbon. Um, Pet Renewables gets an income line from that in terms of what's called a government subsidy called the feeding tariff, um, and by selling um, electricity back to the grid, and it sells some electricity to the schools as well. How is that all paid for? The investors, <coughs> these colourful people at the top. Um, there's one investor, the council's put some money in to get this op opportunity off the ground. Um, so he's put half a million pounds worth in to do that. Um, we've also raised, in seven weeks, um, £600,000 through a community share offer. Um, that's something that's blown all our minds locally, but, but also blown quite a lot of minds nationally, because no one's really raised that much money that quickly um, in this particular community energy space. What those investors get is they get um, it's a, it's a, it's a risk-based investors. It's investment is slightly different from putting your money in an ice or anything like that. But they get what is called a target rate of return of six percent, averaged over twenty years. It's a long-term investment. People uh, can invest between fifty pounds or could invest between before we close it between fifty pounds and um, uh, up to a hundred thousand pounds into that. Um, and yeah, they would get a 6% return on that investment. Um, if that was coupled with a, a bit of um, tax wizardry called the Enterprise Investment Scheme, they could um, increase their net return to 9.4%. That's quite an attractive proposition. Um, so going back, so we launched this on the um, 27th of February. We closed it last Wednesday because we've been over we were oversubscribed and we've been massively, massively successful. Um, great good news story. When we set off, we didn't know. We didn't know how it had gone. Never done a community share offer in Plymouth before, total first. Um, this part, there haven't been many community share offers in this kind of sort of de demographic. Plymouth's not full of super wealthy individuals. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that. So where, where was this money going to come from? We didn't really know. We had a scalable proposition that could work at £50,000 or up to a half a million pounds, and that was our sort of initial kind of thresholds of success. £50,000 we'll be happy with, £500,000 we'd be absolutely cock a hoop with. We got £50,000 in six days. We then kept getting more and more excited as it got further and further up towards um, half a million, and then we went over half a million and we looked at our sums and our financial model and we realised we'd got some extra sites in in the pre in preceding weeks, so we extended up to 600000 we then closed. We're now in the business of installing the panels. I've talked about that already. So we did the 600,000 in seven weeks. Um, that's 20% more than we set off to do. And our first installs have now happened. So our first uh, local solar power stations uh, are now working. So there's schools in Victoria Road, a place still hill, at Borringdon. Um, there's three others. Six of those installs happened um, in Easter, and they're now generating electricity. We've got a whole suite of other sites. There's about another 15, 16 sites that we're currently in the final stages of uh, contracts, etc., and teeing up for installs in half term and through the summer holidays. But by uh, so in September, we should have installed about 0.8 megawatts of electricity through this alone. That coupled with the program that's going on in, uh, on Plymouth Community Homes, um, its solar installs, alongside what the City Council is doing on its own um, state, I think leads us nicely back to Tim's position about, like, yeah, we are starting to make a mark in terms of um, our, the dent in, uh, you know, the ability of Plymouth to generate local, clean, renewable energy. So those are those first um, little solar pan panel um, power stations. So yeah, next steps, we want to do more of this. We we'll generate a model that can go and go and go. So yes, we've closed the first uh, solar um, share offer. We'll be bringing another one back in November um, because there's more sites to do. And there's more work to do in this space. 
Um, we've generated an organisation and where um, over 50% of those investors are from within the PL one to nine postcodes. So we've generated a huge amount of local ownership with people putting their stake, putting money in and supporting this idea. We think that's really exciting and as an actual learning opportunity, action learning opportunity going forward, that's quite an interesting thing for a university to track. Thank you.